another vlog. I'm genuinely so excited about this weekend's vlog. First of all because I have an exciting weekend planned which is always fun but second of all I kind of feel like this weekend and all of the things that I'm going to be doing kind of signify my reawakening which sounds kind of melodramatic but genuinely I feel like over the last couple of weeks it's kind of like I've been coming back to life after a few months of just not feeling like I was living my best life which Probably sounds kind of cringy but genuinely I just felt like throughout you know August and September and October maybe it came across in videos maybe it didn't but internally I was feeling like I was just weighed down and I think genuinely it comes down to the fact that I was in a job that I wasn't loving anymore and I knew it was the time to sort of make that career change and sort of find a new job but equally it's easier said than done when it comes to making that decision finding the right job for you deciding like what move you want to make and I feel like it was was just a difficult time of like figuring it out and then obviously the actual process of looking for a job is never super easy and you know you want to make sure that you're not moving from one job that you don't like into another job that's going to be like equally unsatisfying so it's a kind of it's like a big decision to make and I was feeling that a lot and so I feel like it was was affecting obviously my just like general energy levels and then that was kind of impacting you know how much passion I was feeling for everything else so I really wasn't feeling much energy I wasn't feeling much motivation for reading especially that just like crashed and burned in that time I was hardly reading at all and when I was I just wasn't feeling it like it wasn't an enjoyable experience I wasn't really enjoying the gym whereas for the last few months before that I had been loving the gym and going every day and I just felt like I was kind of going through the motions with a lot of things that used to bring me joy and then just weren't anymore so it was kind of a bit of a uh bit of a time like I'm probably making it sound a bit more dramatic than it actually is but it just was one of those times where I just felt like I was kind of under a like cushion a heavy cushion and it was just making everything a lot harder so long story short I've mentioned it before and I'm going to keep mentioning it because it makes me so happy but I did find that new job that I was hoping to find and it is such an amazing job such an amazing workplace and I've been there for four weeks now and over those last four weeks I just feel like I have like I said been like reinvigorated and I just feel like I'm myself again like work feels really fulfilling and I'm having a great time doing what I'm doing at work and then outside of work I feel like my desire to like be active and move again is coming back I'm wanting to pick up books a little bit more which is great and just in general I just feel more like my happy bubbly energetic self that I usually am and that's amazing because like it wasn't you know a terrible few months but I just wasn't feeling like I was living as my best self and I like to be my best self so all that to say, this weekend I have a jam-packed couple of days of plans, starting with today. Um, I feel like I only ever do this hairstyle of plaits when I'm going to be doing something active like hiking, or in this instance today I'm trying out rock climbing. I'm going to an indoor bouldering gym, which is something I've wanted to do for ages, like before lockdown even, but then obviously lockdown happened and then we moved, and you know, things always come up when it comes to trying something new and you just put it off and put it off. But this week I finally decided to call our local indoor rock climbing place and book an induction so that's what me and Jay are going to be doing today I'm so excited about that because I might be terrible I'm probably going to be terrible but if you start from the bottom there's only one way up especially when you're climbing so that is going to be really fun and no matter how bad I am I'm very very excited to do that 
Today is also the day that Taylor Swift released her Taylor's version of the Red album. So I have been listening to that on Spotify this morning um, and I'm really enjoying it so far. I haven't really listened to Red before because I wasn't a Taylor Swift fan when this was like originally out. But my favourite two songs so far have been Run and Everything Has Changed. Both of them are in collaboration with Ed Sheeran and I just love them as a combination. So that has been really fun. And then what else has been going on? Reading. Okay, so this morning, as you saw, I started My Policeman by Beth and Roberts. This is a book is about to be turned into or adapted I suppose is the correct word into a movie starring Harry Styles which obviously I want to go and see um but it sounds really interesting my friend Sarah read it earlier this year she highly recommended it and it just sounds like it's going to be a really really interesting read what I've read so far has kind of introduced us to one of the three main characters so this is a book set in 1950s Brighton and we have a gay man who is married to a woman but seeing another man and it starts in childhood when the woman and the man meet and she obviously falls in love with him and I think he kind of uses her a little bit as kind of a guise for his sexuality because it was obviously a time where it wasn't safe to be like out publicly as a gay man and so I'm going to be very intrigued to see how it turns out because I think it's going to be quite a messy love triangle but with you know some much more I guess like serious implications than just like a standard love triangle so I'm very interested to see how this one turns out. So I started this one this morning and I'm also midway through reading The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osmond which is a murder mystery set in a retirement village. There is a group of old people who meet regularly and try and solve cold cases and just for fun but then one week an actual murder happens in their sort of vicinity. It turns up on their doorstep and they take it upon themselves to try and solve it. So this is going to be really fun kind of Agatha Christie style and I really like Agatha Christie that I started reading earlier this year for the first time. It's just like a very wholesome small town murder mystery vibe rather than like a scary thriller and I really really enjoy that. So those are the two books that I'm going to be featuring in this reading vlog. I am also reading Mansfield Park by Jane Austen but that will be in a separate reading vlog completely dedicated to this book which just is a little hint. I'm not enjoying it. It's been my least favourite Jane Austen so far. So that's that. Those are all of the books that I'm reading and that is my day. I actually need to dash out of the door in just a second because I need to drop the car off at the garage for its MOT, then I'm going rock climbing and then I will catch up with you later. But before I do, I did want to mention that today's video has also been very kindly sponsored by Anna Louisa, who are always in my videos through these earrings that I literally never take out because I love them so much. I'll be talking more about Anna Louisa later on but I just wanted to let you know that this video has been sponsored by them and if you're interested and checking them out there is a link in the description box down below but more on that later for now I have to dash and go climb some rocks <laughs> Friday has absolutely flown by. I feel like I was just so busy and Jay and I didn't get back from all of our escapades until about 4pm but we had such a fun time at climbing. Jay was really good at it because he does a lot of like pull-ups and monkey bars and hanging things at the gym anyway so I feel like it really played to his strength and he was really good at it kind of like a spider-man on the walls which was great. I on the other hand as predicted was not very good but I had a fun time all the same and I went into it with the expectation that I was probably not going to be very good at it because I probably wasn't going to have the right kind of like functional strength to be like super good at it and also I think bouldering height has a big advantage and I don't have that advantage so I definitely expected that I wasn't going to be amazing at it but because I had that expectation I went in and still had a really fun time and just kind of got to see like all of the different ways that I 
will be able to build that strength and will be able to build those skills if I keep going regularly, which is what I plan to do. So it was a lot of fun. My forearms have never felt so activated. Like I said, Jade does a lot of the like hanging things at the gym and I think I'm gonna have to start doing that because it's kind of the only way that you build that strength and I didn't realize how little strength I had in that area until it came to hanging off of a wall and trying to maneuver myself. And then you realize, wow, I really need to work on that. And there was also at the um, climbing gym, a slack line, which I kept falling off of, but I'm determined to become a talented tight rope walker as well as a proficient climber. So it was a lot of fun and I was just so glad to finally have like ticked it off of my list of like signing up and actually just like getting over the hurdle of going for the first time so that is going to be at least a weekly occurrence from now on which is very very exciting then when we got back from our little escapade and the car got back from its MOT and um, we ended up going for a little walk in the park and then before I knew it it was dinner time and then I was on a live show on Lucy's channel for The Hobbits tonight and that has kind of took up my entire evening so no more reading has been done today but there's plenty of time for that tomorrow and Sunday. It's now about 9pm so I'm gonna head straight to bed because Jay and I'll be going to the gym early in the morning where I think I'll be listening to the Mansfield Park audiobook in prep for my live show for that which is happening tomorrow but I've got lots of other fun things happening tomorrow later after the gym so I'll catch up with you then after a good night's sleep because I think I need it after all of that climbing. <laughs> super active weekend I decided to go swimming this morning which was so much fun I have always loved swimming even when I was younger and I was not an active person in the slightest swimming was like the one sport or form of activity that I always loved I haven't done it for ages and ages especially since moving to York I just haven't looked up any like good places to go swimming but I went this morning had a nice little session I forgot how hard it was but it was really enjoyable and along with rock climbing I'm excited to like keep going and persevering and getting better definitely better at swimming than I am at rock climbing but either way it's always good to kind of like have your starting point and then just like keep improving from there so that was a lot of fun um, and it was a great way to start the morning I feel very very like awake now and just like ready to take on the day and then aside from that I have got quite a busy Saturday plan so first things first my friend Sarah is coming around this morning I think we'll be going out for coffee and some breakfast I hope because I am starving and then in the afternoon my stepdad and my sister are coming over again probably going to go out for a coffee and then in the evening, I'm going to be having a live show for uh, Mansfield Park, which is going to be with my friend Lucy. Her channel is The Book Bell, and I'll link her down below. So we're going to have our Mansfield Park discussion live show this evening. So I've got quite a jam-packed day. In and amongst all of that kind of stuff, I'm going to try and get some reading done of either my policeman or the Thursday Murder Club, or potentially both. But in terms of reading for this reading vlog, I do think tomorrow is gonna be the day for reading because Mansfield Park will be done and dusted, so that won't be my priority anymore. And I don't have any plans for Sunday, which means I should be able to get in a good bit of reading. But for now, I need to go and get dressed in something nicer than my sports clothes and get ready for Sarah to come round and go out for breakfast. guys I for one am very much looking forward to having just a super quintessentially Sunday Sunday because I feel like the first couple of days of my weekend have been so high activity that I feel like today is just going to be the perfect day of rest and that is my favorite thing at the moment about having a three-day weekend is that I can really jam-pack my first two days of the weekend get loads of things done do all of my socializing and just have a fun time but then I can have a complete day of rest on Sunday without feeling like like I've wasted one of my weekend days because that's always how I used to feel on just a two day weekend. If I had a day without plans, it just felt like I was kind of wasting it. Whereas now with three days of a weekend, it just feels like I get the best of everything and I love it. So on my Sunday agenda, I'm planning to do some baking. Specifically, I'm gonna make a 
Biscoff cinnamon roll combination. So I was gonna make just cinnamon rolls. Then I thought, why not put some Biscoff into the mix as well? Because Biscoff makes everything just that little bit better. And I'm essentially gonna alternate. So one roll is gonna be cinnamon and the next is gonna be Biscoff and so on and so forth. And I think it's gonna be delicious. So that's first on the agenda and that will kind of take most of the day because obviously with bread things, you have to leave it to rise. And that means I can just kind of do it here and there and get other things done alongside it. I'm definitely planning to do some reading. Specifically, I'm really keen to get more of my Policeman Red because I obviously started it on Friday and haven't picked it up since. So I really want to get more into that one. I'm gonna be doing some Christmas film watching. In particular, I really fancy finding like the most cheesy, terrible, predictable, Hallmark style Christmas film and just watching that this evening because I feel like Today just feels like the kind of day that would be made just that little bit better by a creepy, like a cheesy Christmas film. So that is on my agenda. And then Jay and I are planning to go out for a nice long walk this morning, just a like slow, meandering, nice lovely walk by the river because it is a very beautiful, sunny autumn morning. And I feel like that would just make today perfect. So I have lots of things on the agenda. I'm really excited to have just a nice Sunday day and of course bring you along with me. But before we head out for our morning walk, I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about the sponsor of today's video, which is Ana Luisa. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, Ana Luisa is in every single one of my videos through these earrings, which I wear all of the time. I got these earrings probably about six months ago now, and I genuinely never take them out and they look good as new. So I feel like that in and of itself, given that I do things like swimming, going to the gym, I leave them in when I'm in the shower. Like I do all of the things that you're probably not supposed to do with jewelry because I'm just lazy with it and they still look good as new. So that I really feel is terrible testament to the quality of these earrings and their jewellery in general because they just look so beautiful and they have such longevity which I just think is amazing because I've definitely had earrings in the past where just after like leaving them in in the shower a couple of times they get tarnished and they look really worn whereas these ones have been in my ears for like six months and they look amazing. So I really do feel like they are such high quality pieces of jewellery and then in just the way that they look I absolutely love them. Now you'll probably notice I don't tend to wear other pieces of jewellery other than earrings very often. I find that being a fairly active person, you know, rings, bracelets, necklaces, they would generally get in the way in like yoga classes or at the gym or swimming or now in the case of like rock climbing and things like that. So I tend to gravitate most towards little earrings that just make each outfit, whether that outfit is like a nice one like I'm wearing today or whether that outfit is like a sweatshirt and leggings combination for the gym. I just feel like those types of earrings just add a nice little pop of sparkle and personality to an outfit and I absolutely love that. I'm particularly drawn to the types of earrings I'm wearing now which are their tiny little hoops with a little piece of like a dangly feature at the bottom because they are really pretty, they look like you've put effort in and they just are a little bit more dressy than just like a stud earring but equally they're not getting in the way of what I'm trying to do and they're not like too dangly if that makes sense. So I really do love these types of earrings and I have a couple more here. These ones are so pretty. They look like suns and I'm obsessed with them, especially given that we're going into a time of year where sun is a little bit less prevalent. So I feel I'll be able to like wear the sun in my earrings. And then these ones are super delicate little sparkly stars and I just think they're so pretty. Everything Anna Luisa has is beautiful. And although I don't wear necklaces very often because I do go to the gym today, I'm wearing my Noel necklace and I just think it is gorgeous. And I feel like this is the type of thing that I will bring out when I just want to feel like I've made an effort. So that is what I'm doing today for my day of absolute rest. So Anna Luisa has such an amazing range of jewellery, so much stuff that you'll definitely find something for you. There's a really great price range and what I love most about them is that they are a carbon neutral brand. And that of course means you can treat yourself without feeling like you are doing damage to the planet or sort of buying into that consumerism that you know is bad for the environment. You can shop with Ana Luisa and know that you are shopping with a brand who values the environment as much as you do and is doing good for the planet. And I'm very happy to say that I have a link in my bio that you can follow and Ana Luisa is currently having their biggest sale of the year where you buy one product and get the next one for 60% off, which is just amazing. So I love Ana Luisa, I'm sure you will too because they have such a great range of products. 
So definitely follow that link in the bio and give yourself a like pre-holidays treat or maybe start your Christmas shopping a little bit early. So with that said, I'm gonna go and get started on my cinnamon roll dough and then head out of my morning walk. Hey darling, can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. We could get out of town See the beautiful world around Wanna see it now Pack our bags and get in that car Leave a little note and we'll drive real far Let's get out, we can leave this city Let's drive to the open Countryside is so pretty With the wind blowing in your hair We can look back someday Baby, don't you understand That we only get one life I wanna make it count, honey Come on now and take my hand Hey, darling I love it when it's me and you On the road with a couple of tunes in a car for two Hey darling You know we're gonna have a really good time Driving in the middle of the night when the stars are bright Pack our bags and get in that car Leave a little note and we'll drive real far Countryside is so pretty With the wind blowing in your hair We can look back someday Baby, don't you understand That we only get one life I wanna make it count, honey Come on now and take my hand I am really enjoying My Policeman. It is exactly the kind of book that I like in the sense that it is I wouldn't say a slow burn, but it is very much driven by character rather than plot. So I'm now on page 97 and this book is split into parts and I think it'll probably be three parts and those parts will determine which of the three main characters perspective we're getting. So I just got to the end of part one, which was the part that was directed by Marion and I really enjoyed just seeing her perspective on her sort of like youthful infatuation with Tom and how that kind of like matured into what she is viewing at this point as like a like proper mature romance and so it goes from them being like quite young children to then young adults and I just thought it was a really interesting way to kind of see this like evolving of a relationship and the introduction of Patrick the other man into this sort of dynamic and it was just really intriguing to see because obviously you can see why Marion would interpret things the way that she does but equally knowing what the book is about and obviously having read the blurb and knowing that it is about like a quite controversial love triangle at this point because this part of the book is set in the 50s is it just makes it all the more interesting. And then I've just gotten on to the start of part two and I'm not 100% sure whose perspective this is going to be yet, but I think it is definitely either Tom or Patrick because it starts going backwards again to a point that we've already seen Marion's perspective. So it's very interesting. I love character driven books and I love just seeing how the intricacies of all of these relationships work. And I think this book is just building such a great picture of these characters that I'm very, very much invested. So I definitely will do some more reading this evening, but as you can tell from the orange glow on my face. It is like 4 p.m. and it's obviously already getting dark because it's November. So I wanted to catch up with you about the book one more time this evening before it's completely pitch black. But for now, I do think I am going to go and put some pajamas on, get super cozy. And I've decided, I think the film I'm gonna watch tonight is Bridget Jones's Baby, which I don't know if this is like classed as a proper Christmas film, but I think all of the Bridget Joneses are like at least somewhat festive and 
I've wanted to watch it for a while, but Jay's at work this evening and it's the kind of film that he would never want to watch. So it seems like the perfect opportunity to put that on. And that's what I'm going to do with my evening. So I'll catch up with you later on, either tonight, if the lighting isn't too terrible, or if not, tomorrow, to let you know how much more reading I have done. Dreamy is in Bridget Jones. Who knew? And what a wonderful surprise. it has actually been a few days since I picked up the camera and so a few days since I watched Bridget Jones's Baby which I loved. I've obviously seen the first two Bridget Joneses. I say obvious, it's obvious to me because I've seen them. It might not be obvious to you but I had seen the like original two Bridget Jones from years and years and years ago but I never ended up watching the newer Bridget Jones's Baby so it was my first time watching it and I loved it. I think it might actually be my favourite one of the Bridget Jones films and also so fun that Patrick Dempsey was in it because I've never seen him in anything other than Grey's Anatomy so that was a fun little surprise as well and all in all it was just such a like a feel-good film. I had such a great time watching it so that was my Sunday evening. I've then been in work for the last few days and I have been reading little bits of my policeman here and there but the daylight like not to keep going on and on about daylight but it really is a case of like starting work and it's only just gotten light and then by the time I finish work in the evening it's like pitch black and just not really a vibe for filming vlog clips because it just looks so yellowy and horrible but I have been reading my policeman you know on my lunch breaks and just like whenever I get a few spare minutes and I'm almost finished with this book I'm now on page 266 so I've got less than 100 pages left and this book is so interesting I think I mentioned the last time I spoke about this book was when I just reached the end of part one and I knew that the second part was going to be from a different perspective but I was wasn't sure whose perspective it was going to be so in actual fact it turned out to be from Patrick's perspective so just to reiterate we have Tom who is their policeman he is kind of like the main love interest of this story and then we have both Marion and Patrick who are both kind of vying for his, love, for his love and affection and I wasn't sure if the book was going to feature all three of their perspectives but now that I'm at this point it actually seems as though it's only kind of switching between Patrick and Marion and kind of showing their infatuation with Tom as he is kind of like in the middle of their two like really really like deep loves and yet he is kind of torn between both circumstances and so Tom is probably like the biggest personality of the novel which is obviously interesting given that he's the only one whose perspective we don't actually get or at least haven't had until this point and that kind of makes the obsession with him from the other two characters seem like even more intense because it's all just like about their perspective of him rather than him himself if that makes any sense at all so it's really interesting to see like their two parallel experiences with Tom and it almost seems like a competition of like who loves him most and who can get his attention and his affection and it's very very interesting because it just seems like almost childish in the sense of like having a group of three friends and there's always one who gets left out and that is kind of the circumstance that we have here only it's an adult relationship so very interesting 
as I said, not long left until the end of the book. So I'm definitely going to be finishing this one today, but I'm actually going to head out for a walk because it is such a beautiful morning and then come back, have some breakfast and finish off with my policeman. So I'll catch up with you later when I've finished. Well, I'm glad I went out for my walk when I did because it was so beautiful first thing this morning, but it's about 11 o'clock now and it is so great. It's kind of weird how that seems to be the case in autumn and winter. Like the first thing in the morning can be so beautiful. And then if you were a person who sleeps in, you could wake up and just think it was the most horrible gray day because you'd not seen the sun in the morning and it just seems to disappear by the middle of the day, which is kind of weird but I'm glad that I was able to go out and make the most of it this morning and then since getting back I have had a delightful cup of tea I went for the um T2 Melbourne breakfast which is like an English breakfast blend with vanilla and things added and it's just such a lovely cup of tea flavour and then I also finished up with My Policeman which was such an incredible book I'm really really glad I decided to read this one I think it's an interesting read in terms of like the structure because obviously like I said we have these two um, recollective recounts of quite a like short term relationship to be honest. All of the events in this book and this dramatic impact that this love triangle has on these three people happens in like a fairly short space of time aside from Marion kind of recounts her like first childhood interactions with Tom and then it kind of jumps forward to when they're young adults and it kind of jumps into their love triangle like I said and that little section of the book which takes up sorry, that little section of their life which takes up the majority of the book is actually, you know, very, very short in terms of like the amount of years that it spans. And it's really interesting because it's so dramatic and kind of changes the course of their life. And yet it was such a small segment of their lives and it like just completely dictated the course of everything that would happen afterwards. And I think that's really testament to how, you know, such small events can really like change everything. I also think it was really interesting because quite a lot of the things that were written about were quite sad like in the sense of like the necessity for people like Tom to try and hide their sexuality given the fact that he knew he couldn't be a policeman and also be like a gay man at this time it just was not acceptable it was in fact illegal and it just is really sad to think about like the length that some people would go to in order to sort of like preserve themselves and to hide like this key part of their identity and so you obviously feel a lot of sadness for Tom and for Patrick and the way that they have to hide that part of themselves but you also feel a lot of empathy for Marion who was just really naive and didn't see the reality until she'd already kind of like committed herself to a relationship and a future with Tom and only then did she kind of realise that she was kind of just being used as a guise to make Tom seem like he was a straight man in a sort of healthy marriage so that he could go on living his normal life whilst also having a relationship with Patrick on the side. And so it was sad to see how like all of these characters kind of ended up living very unfulfilling lives because circumstance kind of led them into this kind of like false relationship situation. So that was really sad and I recognise that there is a lot of like trauma within this book but equally because it's written in the sense of being a recollection and you know that at the end of the novel these characters have kind of come to terms with the situation that they have seen themselves in. It also feels a little bit less dramatic 
than the events maybe would have felt if they were written in present tense. So I think like in any case a recollection can often feel a little bit more removed and therefore a bit less emotional and so I kind of found myself like consciously recognizing the sadness of what I was reading but also not feeling it in the sense of like being necessarily like moved to tears or anything like that because it does just feel very removed and almost like matter of fact in the way that it's written. So it manages to do a lot in quite a short amount of pages and I just think it does it so well and I'm now very very excited to see how it is brought to life on screen with the new movie adaptation coming out next year. I'm very very excited to see that so all in all would consider this a big success and I'm really really glad to have read it finally because it's been on my shelves for quite a few months now. I also wanted to touch on the fact that I shared a community post on my channel a couple of days ago talking about content that people would like to see in the next few weeks before the end of the year. I'm going to be doing a 12 days of vlogmas series in December I know because of my job and the fact that in all of these vlogs I always talk about how the week goes so quickly, I definitely wouldn't be able to commit to doing a vlog every single day until Christmas, but I am going to do a vlog every other day. So the first one will be out on the 2nd of December and then, you know, like every day every other day after that until Christmas Eve. So I'm very, very excited about that. I'll also be filming like Christmas Eve and Christmas Day vlogs and I have lots of festive content planned. But if you have anything else that you'd like to see over the next few weeks, then do leave it in a comment because I would love to hear your guys' opinions on the kinds of videos that you'd like to see from me before the end of the year. And for anyone else who, like me, loved the tea advent calendar last year and my little here's the tea segment that I did in every single vlog that is happening again this year I have ordered the bird and blend tea advent calendar which is the one that I wanted last year but I ordered too late and it was sold out so I ordered really early this year it has arrived and I'm so excited to do that here's the tea segment again because it was so much fun so all that will be coming in the next few weeks and I'm very very excited about it because I just when I think about Christmas, I actually feel a little bit sick with excitement because I just think it's the best time of year and I just feel so, so excited about it. So that is all coming. I'm already in the Christmas spirit, clearly, by the use of my Christmas cup, but I just absolutely cannot wait. So with that said, I just wanted to give you one final reminder that I have a link in the description box to Anna Luisa and they're currently hosting that amazing sale for Black Friday. So if you want to treat yourself or someone else to some jewelry, then it is the perfect chance to get some beautiful stuff from Anna Luisa. So definitely click that link if you fancy checking it out and another big thanks to them for sponsoring today's video. So with that said, thank you so much for watching. I've had the most fantastic week and I hope you enjoyed the vlog. See you next time.